Hey America, where would you be without your trains, your planes, and your automobiles? Well, probably where you are right now, at home, sitting in front of the TV, wasting time. And have you ever felt that you, the home viewer, you don't have a say in the matter, you don't have a choice as to what you're going to see on television? Well, tonight we hope to solve all that. This is a history-making evening. For the first time in the history of television, it's going to be true democracy in action. You, the home viewer, via your remote, you'll get to vote, and the votes will be tabulated into this highly sensitive piece of equipment. We're almost set, George. Uh, yep, yeah, Mark is working on this piece of equipment here. And we're gonna, you're going to get a chance to vote on what you're going to see on today's show. Are we almost ready, Mark? I'm all set, George. Now, to vote, you're going to be given a choice one and a choice two. And at the appropriate time when we say vote now, you'll press either one or two on your remote. It's that simple, and you, the folks at home, will get to choose what you see on today's primetime. Okay, we're all set, Mark? I'm all set right here, George. Okay. First, do you want to hear our regular fine primetime theme? Or do you want to hear Jolly Joe Kojil sing his sunshine song? Vote now. And... Uh, here, uh, I think we're going to be listening to Jolly Joe Kojo yep, sing his, his fine sunshine song. Okay, now the second area we're going to be voting on is our opening. Do you want to see our regular opening montage that we use on the show every week? Or do you want to look at some of Mark's wrestling magazines? Vote now. And, yeah, it looks like we're yep. going to be looking at some of Mark's wrestling magazines. Jeez. Well, now the third thing we're going to be voting on is our co-host. Now, number one, do you want Mark to remain here as co-host for the rest of the show? Or, number two, do you want me to co-host the show with late night's David Letterman? Vote now. And... Hey, look, Mark, I, I, I guess you're going to be co-hosting the program. Jeez, I'm not out of a job. You're not out of a job yet. Uh, uh, Jan, Jan, uh, can you tell Dave we won't be needing him this time? Send him home and tell him we'll, we'll be getting in touch with him. Okay, Dave okay. is on his way. Now, the next area is... Reset this. Oh, uh, yeah, you got to reset that. Uh, what, what do you want us to wear? Hmm. Now, the number one choice is, do you want me and Mark to wear orange jumpsuits? Or, the second choice, do you want us to wear what we wore to the station today? Which is, by the way, what I have on, and that's hmm. what Mark has on. You can vote now. <laughs> and yeah, it, looks, it, it looks like we're going to be wearing what we wore to the station today. Okay, now the last area that we're going to vote on right now is, you know, we usually go out to some exclusive location to videotape our primetime programs, but today we decided to stay here at the station in the Sky Dome. Now, what would you like to see in, for the background for the entire show? Would you like to see, number one, planes landing at Westover? Or, number two, Morgan horses. Vote now. Comes up, and Morgan horses. It, it, looks, it looks like we're going to be looking at Morgan horses for our background here, for the entire program. Okay, let's run things down one more time. Our theme, instead of our usual theme, we're going to listen to Jolly Joe Kojil sing his sunshine song. Our opening montage will be of Mark's wrestling magazines. Co-hosting the show, we had to send David Letterman home. Mark is going to co-host the show. We're going to wear what we wore to the station today, and our background is going to be Morgan Horses. Okay, let's begin this history-making event. I'm so happy to be living in the sunshine. No more snow and shovels make me very happy. Swimming pools and women fill my eyes so jolly. I'm so glad to be here enjoying the sunshine.
sunshine No more snow and shovels make me very happy Swimming pools and women fill my eyes so jolly I'm so glad Hi, I'm George Deronda And hi, I'm Mark Bro. And welcome to a history-making event, the first Home Viewer's Choice Custom Show, where you, the home viewers, have voted for what you're going to see on the program today. And what a lineup we have for the show today. We're going to have Gary Sladek and his Wheel of Death. And we'll be showing you how you, the folks at home, can get your pictures on the front of a magazine cover. Yeah, and we're going to have also the entertainers. But to start off the big show, it's EFO, the Eddie Foreman Orchestra, performing Stone by Stone. <laughs> Somebody loved me for so long, for so long. But you're tearing down the walls I built around me, stone by stone, stone by stone. You take it all of the pain I've been holding inside me. Love is the way we have a place to begin. It's feeling like we're gonna be together From now on, from now on We're building love upon a firm foundation Stone by stone, stone by stone Afraid to let somebody love me for so long, for so long. But you're tearing down the walls I built around me, stone by stone, stone by stone. You've taken all of the pain I've been holding inside me. Love is the way we have a place to begin. Is EFO with Stone by Stone. Yes, and it's that time of the program again. It's time for you folks at home to vote again. Get your remotes. We're going to vote this time, and it's for only the rest of this segment. Do you want us to sound like we usually do? That's number one. Or number two, do you want us to sound like we're in a cavern with an echo effect? Vote now. Results are in. The results are in, and it looks like we're going to be adding an echo effect hmm. for the rest of this segment only. Okay, Jan, uh, turn on the echo. <clears throat> mm, sounds, sounds strange already. What? <laughs> I know that, that echo. Well, the folks at home voted on it. We have no choice in the matter. But when we return, we'll have Gary and his Wheel of Death. Stick around. <laughs> You know, Piggy, everybody's trying to save energy. What can we do? Don't waste electricity. You can make a difference. Write National Wildlife Federation, Washington, D.C., 20036. Yes, my next guest spins for a living. This is called the Space Wheel. The Wheel of Death. The Wheel of Death. And this is Gary with the Hannaford Circus. 
Welcome to Prime Time. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Why do you call it the Wheel of Death? Has anyone died? We, we call this the Wheel of Death because you're, every time you go up on this thing, you're taking a chance. You're risking your life. Uh, this is the small wheel that I have. I have a larger wheel with a eight foot section that goes in the middle of this, so it, it takes me up another eight feet. Uh, you fall from the top of this, chances are you might not get up. This is, people have been hurt in this act. This is uh, an act that originated in Europe, Germany actually, and uh, I took this act over from a fellow who fell and can't do it anymore. Now he's a little bit older now, but and he's walking, but he had a bad fall and he just, he, he's a little bit crippled up. Not too bad, but I, I mean, I don't expect to ever be like that because I'm, I'm a better acrobat than he ever was. But this fellow was decent, he was good, and he, uh, he, he just got away from me one day and he, he fell. But I don't, I mean, I, I don't plan on, I'm a daredevil, but I like to be a, a pretty uh, safe daredevil. I'm thinking every time I'm up there and, 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 and I'm scared of this wheel here, but I also have a good respect and I, and I, I enjoy doing it. I have fun when I come out to do the act. And what did you do before this? I'm a national, I was a national champion gymnast in college. I went to State University of New York in uh, Farmingdale, Long Island. And uh, about 13 years ago, I was champion gymnast in school. And I had two choices, either get into the stunt field, go out to LA or so, uh, you know, Hollywood and try to be a stunt man, or get into entertainment field and be like a, a freelance performer. And I have about uh, five or six acts that I do, from high daredevil acts to, uh, low axe, comedy trampoline axe on the ground and things of this nature. So I mean, I have a big repertoire and a lot of versatility, so this is a good field for me. In the stunt field, for motion pictures and stuff, if if I went out there, I could get into stunt work probably very easily, but I'd twist my ankle once and they'd say, next, you know, there's a thousand people waiting behind so you. So that's what made you choose this so as opposed I took to the this motion picture as industry. as opposed to that, uh, you know, I mean, a stunt man doesn't get any, uh, any recognition in the uh, motion picture industry. I get, I have a much better feeling performing right in front of the people, they're right here, I can see their faces, I just, I'm, and I love to perform for them, and, I, and they show me their appreciation, it makes me feel great. We were talking about being right up close to your audience, okay? I do a hand balancing act, I stack six three foot chairs on top of an eight foot table. I have no tricks, no gimmicks, it's all balanced, and I'm real proud of it, and many People, they come up to me after the show or intermission and say, oh, do those chairs stick together? I say, well, there they are. Go look at them. And it's just, to be able to do this act right in front of an audience that's 15 feet from you, and their eyes seeing that the chairs don't stick together and that it's all you, it's just, they really appreciate it. And I appreciate that they appreciate me. Well, we all know I on television, know. anything can be edited. But, can be edited. but this guy is real. Uh, how do you keep it balanced? Like when you're up on top, it's it's swinging at a good speed. Right. Okay. This wheel of death here is all works. It's a matter of physics. It, it has a center axle on bearings, mm -hmm. and if you look on top, that's a heavy weighted counterbalance. I stand in the wheel that evens out the weight. So I walk forward, the wheel moves. I walk backward, the wheel moves. I control the speed of the wheel. If I want it to stop. If I'm going backwards and I want it to stop, I move a little forward, then the wheel stops. If I'm going forward, I have to inch up a little backwards. If I stay back on the wheel a little bit, I let it get away from me a little bit. It goes a little faster. I can make it go fast, I can make it go slow. And, and as you jump around in it. The most exciting part of the act is when I climb onto the outside, then it's the, the wheel kicks up to, into the air, the counterbalance, and now I'm in the race for my life, and I have to keep up with the wheel. Like, uh, and, and just, sometimes I get a little bit too far behind, uh, as you saw, I, I, you, if you look while I was practicing, I went to get on the wheel, I let it get too far ahead of me, I had to grab the outside strut and just hold on for dear life as I went around one time and righted myself. That wasn't a trick, that was a mistake. But I grabbed on, I'm, a, I'm an acrobat, and that's the whole thing with an act like this. You have to be an accomplished acrobat to be able to cover your mistakes. And what I just did when you were watching me practice is I made a mistake, and the wheel started getting away from me. Instead of falling off the wheel, I quick grabbed the outside strut, held on for dear life, rode it around one time, knew what I was doing as I was going around, and then rided myself. So, so you're thinking that's every you minute as Always. where you are, you have to know Always. where you're. Yes. Have you ever had any real close calls where you've you've come off the wheel and go, Phew, I made it that time? I've had worse than that. Worse I've, than that. I've fallen one time from this act. Not too what high. What happened was 
I was very lucky that I'm in shape enough to be able to handle what happened. Like I said, the wheel getting away from me. I get on the outside of the wheel. I was running this wheel doing my last final trick, which was the, it's called the race, the race in space or the race for life, man versus machine. It's me against the machine. I get it going so fast, and I'm running, and I'm trying to catch it, and it got away from me. And as the wheel kicked up into the air, I started falling off. Instead of just falling, I grabbed the wheel, and I rode the wheel hanging just by my hands underneath it, rode it all the way up 45 feet and all the way around, and just as I come about 10 feet off the ground, I didn't fall off, I had to jump off because if I would have held on, as you look at the wheel, only stands four feet off the ground, the wheel would have broke my back in half, it would have smashed me and drilled me right into the ground. I had to know just when, not only was I scared holding on to this wheel, going around, but I was thinking at the same time, how am I going to get off of this thing in time? And also, when I hit the ground, am I going to be able to roll out of the way to get out of the way of the counterbalance that's about solid steel going to take my head off if I'm there, if I hit the ground and I'm hurt and can't move, this counterbalance comes about one foot off the ground, it's going to smash me. So not only did I have to think, hop off, make sure I could get out of the way of the wheel, but now I have to get out of the way of the counterbalance. And all this happened within split seconds. And that was my closest call when I walked away from that. I had bruises on my left side of my body, I, I hurt my knee, my shins, and my left elbow. But I couldn't believe, I was in the dressing room saying, oh my gosh, I'm not hurt. I mean, I'm bruised, but I'm not hurt. I got a show tonight, I'm gonna be able to do it. It was great, I mean, uh, and it really, it's, it was just, that's the first time I said, you have to get your sleep every night. You have to be on your toes. You have to practice the stuff. You have to keep in tune with this thing. That's, so you that's, can't, you that's can't go out partying every night of the week when you're performing like this. I could do that when I was in college 13 years ago when I was a gymnast, okay? I, could, I was still a good athlete, and I could drink in the evening if I wanted to on a, on a Saturday night or something like that. And I like to have my share of fun. But now I'm 32 years old. I, I'm, I'm a very straight personality. I like, I'm, a, I'm a golfer. I'm a tennis player. I, I, I get my kicks more out of like leisure sports and my shows. And uh, I relax, like the, just like the next guy relaxes on a, on a day off Saturday afternoon. I'm watching a baseball game or something and I drink uh, two cold beers. I mean, that's, you know, that's like a fun relaxation for me. And, that, and I think that's safe to say that that really wouldn't harm anybody. I don't think that's too bad to, for me to unwind with. You know, I've been given this ability to be a really good acrobat and now into a field where I'm developing daredevil acts and making a decent living doing it and really getting a lot of a lot of good response from the audience and it's like a great big pat on the back and really great for my ego and I love showing the people that I appreciate them appreciating me and I just uh, thank God I have this ability and able to, to do this kind of work for myself and just I'm ecstatic about it and hopefully I can do this till I'm 45 years old. Or longer. Or uh, longer. Hey, why quit my, at 45? My father, who is like, I, I'm very close with my family and stuff, and my dad and I are like golf buddies and stuff. He's a banker. He's in the banking business. He wears a tie up to his Adam's apple five days a week for the last 40 years. He he flies out and sees me when I'm in Mexico, Canada. He, he, he comes, he'll be coming to the Big E. He's taking the next Saturday afternoon. He's driving out to see me here. He loves what I do. He wishes he was doing what I do. What was his initial reaction when you said, hey, I'm going to be on the wheel of death? My mother couldn't handle it. My father said, oh, Grace, Gary can do anything. You know, he thinks I'm just this, you know, like, he just thinks I'm so great. I mean, he, he, he's a big exaggerator. He just, you know, he loves his kids and he likes to be proud of his kids and stuff. My brother Jimmy, my younger brother, he's, he has a starring role in a Broadway show, Jerome Robbins Broadway. My dad is ecstatic about that. And he always has the pictures and he's showing mm -hmm. everybody. And, you know, I'm real proud of my father and I'm proud of what he's instilled in us with the culture and everything. And we just try to do a great job to please our folks and to please ourselves. And we just, my, my brother and I are the two happiest kids in the world. You know, we're still kids. 32. He's 28. He's 28. So uh, we're having a great time. But he won't fun. do what you do, and you won't do what he does. We both would probably like to do what each other does, and uh, we really don't have the time to. I, I'm into was, the dance field. Was he a field. gymnast too? No, he wasn't. He, he wasn't a gymnast, and I was never a dancer. But if you notice in my work with my gymnastics and the way I, I could get into the dance field. It takes, I, could, I doubt if I could ever get on the Broadway or anything, but it takes a lot of practice. My brother Jimmy, he can do some acrobatics, but he could maybe never excel into things like this. We both really have a great appreciation for what each other does. We really do. And uh, we're best buddies and we always go to see each other. So, it's exciting. We, we love show business, we just love it. We, we're happy to be able to be in it. We, we really appreciate it.
and a lot of people wish they could be in it. A lot of people do. I'm glad that I'm one of them that can be. Well, Gary, thanks for being here on Primetime and Thank spending you a few much. minutes with us. We'll let you get back to your uh, rehearsal. Always a pleasure meeting somebody who appreciates my work. As soon as I saw that, I was amazed. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, I hope you enjoy the show when you get a chance to see the show. If you come to see the 4 o'clock show, I'll try to do a good job. Do an extra special job. Extra special. Okay, hey, stick around. We'll be back with more prime time right after this. We're looking for a few good men with a medal to be Marines. My next guest can put you on the cover of any major magazine in the country. He did it for us. Let's meet Eric Lee. Well, Eric, welcome to Prime Time. It's a pleasure to have you here. You just put us on the cover of Celebrity. Yes, yes. It was our pleasure. We can put you on the cover of one of 55 magazines which we have. Many of them are licensed directly to us. We have two products. One where you can come to our studio, portable studio. We'd be set up at the Eastern States Exposition as well as several large fairs including one in Boston, a car show, and we're also back in Springfield for a sportsman show in the spring then. We provide the costumes, everything you'd need to go on the cover of your choice then and produce a magazine cover similar to this here. Our second product that we have is a mail order product where you can send a snapshot to us. We can work from a photo and put that on a magazine cover of your choice. And this works out as a great gift item for birthdays or Christmas presents. So your group is called Celebrity Photo and you do operate mail order? Yes, we operate a mail order out of our base in Hanover, Massachusetts where customers are able to send us a cover, a picture, to be placed on the cover of their choice then. And if someone wants to get in touch with you, what's the address? They can contact us at Celebrity Photos, P.O. Box 1335, Hanover, Mass, 02339, or call direct 617-826-6788. It takes about three weeks. We work from a photo, enlarge that, and put it onto the magazine cover of their choice. They and I suppose our cover should be out momentarily. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, here it is. Hey, hey, look at this. This this looks great, really good. Well, thanks for being here on Prime Time. Our pleasure. Thanks for the great photo. Glad. Hope you enjoy it. Hope to see you again real soon. Hey, stick around. We'll be back with more Prime Time right after this. We're celebrities. <laughs> Way back in 1988, when I was young, the American Cancer Society taught me that a low-fat, high-fiber diet could reduce the risk of cancer. Today, I'm 82 and still having a blast. Execute. The American Cancer Society knows eating right can reduce the risk of cancer. Welcome back to Prime Time and the first Home Viewer's Choice custom show where you the home viewers are voting on what you're seeing on the program right it's unbelievable, now. unbelievable George. Uh, amazing what technology has come to and it's time to vote again. Now for the rest of this segment only do you want to see us as we are or number two do you want to see us flipped upside down? Vote now. Well looks like we're going to be getting flipped around George. We're going to be... Better hold on. We're going to be fl flipped upside... Okay Jen I'm ready flip us Oh, no, that, that, was, that was almost painful. Jeez. Mark, Mark I, I, I don't know if I can handle this. Maybe you better finish. Well, it's that time once again of the program that we're going to be going to the entertainers with Looking for Love.
fool's game hoping to win Sharing those sweet lies but losing again was Looking for Love performed by the entertainers. They did a great job once again. Yes, we usually do, Mark. But hey, it's, it's that time. You folks have been here for a magical night, the first Home Viewer's Choice custom show. And I'd like to thank everybody for being here and thank you folks at home for participating in this program. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody.